In this video, we're going to review the basic muscle anatomy. What I want you to be able to do is to listen to this video and use your textbook and be able to fill out that concept map that I've put out in Blackboard. I will check your answers in class, but I want to see it filled out when you come into class. All right, we're going to start with the largest anatomy and work our way down to microscopic. So from gross anatomy down to microscopic. Here's the bone. Here's the muscle. I want you to notice that the muscle is not directly attached to the bone. It attaches to the bone through the tendon. So what a tendon does, a tendon attaches muscle to bone. Now it's not like this tendon starts right here and then attaches to the bone. The tendon, the tissues of the tendon run all the way through the muscle. So let me introduce you to the different layers of connective tissue that surround the muscle and that become end up becoming the tendon. All right, here you have the whole muscle group. Here you have the whole muscle group right here and that connective tissue that is located around the muscle is called the epimysium. Epi covers or on top of, you've seen that prefix several times now. So the epimysium covers or goes around the whole muscle becomes part of the tendon. Okay, becomes part of the tendon. Then we have the muscle fibers within the muscle. Now there's a group of muscle fibers and that group of muscle fibers is called a fascicle. So here you have a single fascicle. So a fascicle is made of a group of muscle fibers. Surrounding each fascicle is called the paramysium. That's the layer of connective tissue that goes around a fascicle. That paramysium also becomes part of the tendon. Now within a fascicle you have a group of muscle fibers. So here is an individual muscle fiber. Around each individual muscle fiber is a layer of tissue called the endomysium. The endomysium also becomes the tendon. Now why do we have these several layers of connective tissue that become the tendon which attaches to the bone? One reason is in order for a muscle fiber to contract it has to get a signal from your nervous system. So when that motor neuron, which will be talked about in another video, when that motor neuron stimulates a fiber, we don't want that stimulation to spread to other fibers. So it kind of acts as a barrier. So one fiber is only stimulated by that portion of the motor neuron. The other reason is by having these several layers of this tendon come together, it makes the tendon stronger. Okay, it makes the tendon stronger. If your tendon just started here, then it would be very easy to tear a tendon of a muscle. All right, so we've gone from the large anatomy from a whole muscle to a fascicle, which is a group of fibers, and then you have a fiber. These fibers, this whole thing here is a fiber, one structure I want to bring up in the fiber is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It is the endoplasmic reticulum of a muscle fiber. Now what you need to know about it that's special is that it stores large amounts of calcium. And we'll talk about why that calcium is important when we get into muscle contraction or the sliding filament theory. Note this fiber is a cell. It's called a fiber because the way it looks it's elongated but it's still a cell. So it has lots of mitochondria to make ATP which will be important when we talk about uh, muscle contraction. It has nucleus. Actually, it's unique in that it has several nuclei. So it's unique in that it doesn't have one. It actually has several. So it's mitochondria. It has ribosomes that are going to make the proteins we need. It has everything that a cell has. So again, it looks different, and you'll hear the word fiber, but it is still a cell. So let's look at that cell now and break it down into smaller units. Here's a whole cell. Here's a whole cell. Each cell is made of what we call myofibrils. Okay, myofibrils. So here is a single myofibril. So you have a cell that is made of myofibrils. Now I want you to notice when you look at this myofibril, you'll see these striations. And you probably briefly talked about these in lab. Skeletal muscle has a striated look. From this striation here to here, sarcomere. Okay, it's called a sarcomere. This is the functional unit. This is the functional unit of a muscle fiber. So here you have a sarcomere from this line to this line. And down here you see it blown up. So this line here is called a Z-line or a Z-disc. This one right here is called a Z-line or a Z-disc. So it goes from Z-line to Z-line. So in here is a sarcomere. Within the sarcomeres, and these are all sarcomeres, you get a line of sarcomeres going down these myofibrils, is called the myofilaments. So the myofibril has sarcomeres, and these sarcomeres contain myofilaments. Okay, myofilaments. 
The myofilaments, the two main myofilaments that we're going to focus on are the actin and the myosin. Now actin is what's called a thin filament and it's these purple little balls right here. Those are actin. The myosin, which is known as the thick filament, is this green structure right here. And what I want you to notice is it has these little heads that come off it. Sorry about that. It has these little heads that come off it that are called the myosin cross bridges or the myosin heads. When we talk about muscle contraction, what's going to happen is these myosin heads are going to bind to the actin and they're going to do what's called ratcheting. Now let's look, let's look at the sarcomere more in depth. So here is your actin, okay, here's your actin, your actin's here, here's your z-line, okay, z-line to z-line, z-line to z-line, that is our sarcomere, and here's our myosin. Okay, and you see these little cross bridges, these little hands coming off the myosin. Now there's some structures within a sarcomere that you need to know. The way these proteins are lined up, we can see these bands. On a microscopic level, we can see these bands. So here's the sarcomere from here to here. This is the next sarcomere on this side. So your I band is right here. Your I band, if you look here, which myofilament does it contain? It contains actin. So you have this, what's also called sometimes a light band, but it's the I band. It goes from here to here, and it contains actin. Now from here, where that I band ends, all the way to here, where the next I band starts, because here's your I band here, and it would contain part of your sarcomere, which would be over here. Between the I bands is what we call the A band. Okay. The A band contains which of the myofilaments? It contains both actin and myosin. So it's sometimes you hear it referred to as the dark band. The old term is dark band. But here is a dark band, and it's dark because it's much thicker, and light doesn't go through it as well when you're looking under the microscope. But what you'll notice is in the middle of the A band is what we call the H band or the H zone. And again, you can use zone or band for this. And you'll notice what's the only myofilament that's located in that H zone. And the answer is, it's just, it's just myosin. So what you need to know is the bands, you need to recognize a picture and identify the bands, and you need to know which myofilaments make up that band. Now to give you just a brief introduction to what's going to happen, how this muscle is going to contract, is these little cross bridges come off the myosin are going to bind to this actin, and they're going to pull. They're going to pull the Z lines in this direction. It's almost like a tug of war. Here's the people with their little hands. They're going to bind to actin and they're going to pull. They're going to pull the Z lines of the sarcomere together, which is going to shorten the sarcomere. All the sarcomeres in a fiber are going to do that at the same time. That's going to shorten the muscle cell, the muscle fiber, which is going to pull on the connective tissue, which is going to pull on the tendon, which is going to move the bone and allow for movement to occur. So that's your basic anatomy of the muscle fiber or the muscle, the whole muscle, I should say, not just the fiber. So start working on that concept map, and we'll make sure that you've got the correct answers in when we get into lecture.